What's up, you lazy, entitled, maceman-dwelling millennials, bootstrapping boomers, apathetic Xers, and goddamn Gen Z kids today? So it turns out Russia, you know, is definitely still trying to fuck with our democracy again because we're, we're super surprised that that, <laughs> that that is a thing that's happening. Right, and at, in my research, I did find that not only are they fucking with our democracy, they're fucking with at least, like, 10 other countries other like any major western democracy they're they're meddling in it's it's kind of their thing basically um, yeah and they spent a lot of money on it mm-hmm. spent a lot of money not in comparative to like their like country's gdp but like as Just far as like in general f- like if you're gonna start like a program like uh-huh. i don't know like universal child care or something yeah. like that <laughs> you could spend that much money on spying and messing mm-hmm. with elections or you could provide that service for your citizens um so <laughs> that much yeah. money basically i mean if we're being honest russia and the united states aren't that different uh the government really doesn't give a fuck about its people and would much rather spend its money doing army military stuff <laughs> right against yeah. the other one like like this is we're definitely not that different uh militaristically <laughs> yeah. we we haven't invaded any countries recently um, we have invaded a lot over the years, but yes, no. Uh, um, over the years, absolutely, we've you know, done the you whole like Ukraine thing mm-hmm. um, just before people had the internet. Yeah, <laughs> you know, and you know, and we weren't doing it to like keep it. We were doing it to well, we were for doing funsies it, we, mostly. We were doing it to keep it, but not like own it. Like yeah, quote unquote. Like we're doing it to put a puppet government in place mm-hmm. so it looks way we better. We didn't want to make it part of the United States. We right. just wanted to be able to tell them what to do without having to, like, you know, provide stuff for their people. <laughs> right. We didn't want to make them citizens. No. <laughs> that, I mean, come on. We can't have more brown people mm-hmm. become citizens, obviously. <laughs> that would be disastrous. Let's see, where at least Russia's like, we we want this to be part of our country. That's where we do that differently. We're right. we're like remote colonialism, you know. That's exactly <laughs> we we coined. We 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 were uh you know jump starting on the fuck I can't think of the word I'm thinking of uh Pioneers, pi- we pioneered remote, yep. remote yep. colonialism, yep. Um, because all like France and Germany and Dutch and mm-hmm. UK, it, like they all, they all did wanted, traditional colonial. They all wanted colonialism. like the countries yeah. to be part of their country. Yeah, like, they're they were like, like you're, this you're, is our territory. You're part of you're part of Great Britain. India now. is is Great Britain mm-hmm. now. <laughs> yeah, like like you are us now, and and, uh, and, and we're like you are still you. We're just going to you know. We're corporate colonialism. <laughs> we, we we just outsource our colonialism. Right. I mean, except for Hawaii, we did yeah. just straight up colonize Hawaii and yeah. just say, "Hey, you are us now." Yeah. Um, that, but that was a thing. That that's because but, I think they decided it was super strategic militaristically to have oh, a, a base in the Pacific. Absolutely, and you know, and I mean, we we used to do like the traditional colonialism with right. like Mexico and all that kind of stuff. But even right, early on, on, Texas and yeah, California, like, all that used to be Mexico. <laughs> uh, and then and then we're like, you know, we don't have to keep like taking the countries. We can just destabilize their entire government so our companies can still make money off of them, but we don't actually have right, to provide. Or stabilize shit for them. it by putting somebody in power that's going to be in favor of the United States. Mm-hmm. So that's what we call spreading democracy. Yeah, <laughs> America, fuck yeah! God, if you haven't played, if you haven't seen anything from Hell Divers yet, just like watch like a five minute clip of the best like one liners of Hell Divers. <laughs> uh, it's incredible. All right, I haven't. Ch- I'll have to check that out because I have not seen that. <laughs> it's awesome. Um, anyways, we're <laughs> actually not here to t- today to talk about colonialism, um, even though it is you know, ever prevalent in our mm-hmm. world. Uh, we are here to talk about Russian um, inter- interference with yeah. elections, specifically our mm-hmm. elections, and um, how much of an impact they really have been making for yeah. almost basically a decade now. Yeah. Oh, absolutely. Th- this is one thing I do have to give Russia... Cr- I don't know if giving them credit is the right right terminology <laughs> here. I mean, they're basically doing Cold War stuff Russia with computers never stopped doing Cold War stuff. Like, well, like, let's let's be real. The Cold War never actually ended. It just got a little chillier. Well, I don't know if I would agree with that. I think basically they were just like, yeah, now we're gonna start doing the whole capitalism thing. So I guess we can work with you as long as we make money with you. Yeah. So, but we've still been, we've still had 
big rockets pointed at each other the whole time. Yeah. We've still we've That's still true. done the same like I, you know like the serious stuff where both Russia and the United States were conducting definitely not military <laughs> operations together, but blowing right. up the same fucking people and being like, oh look at our military hardware is more badass than your military hardware type shit. That's true. We it sort of turned into a like fierce um like cold shoulder type thing yeah into like hey this is like a brotherly not almost eh, kind of brotherly in a way yeah not uh, quite brotherly no. but like a, a rivalry <laughs> like just like a just a like uh-huh. a just normal rivalry without the whole like uh-huh. L- we're, like we're gonna like uh high school football teams except with more people being blown up <laughs> yeah that's that's probably the most the yeah. best way to put it um and then it got uh, more real Cold Warish again when Russia started getting more bold about invading like Georgia and annexing Crimea and yep. stuff like that, yep. and we didn't do a whole lot to put them in check. And then you know nope. we started sanctioning them again, and and now it's become much more. Uh, and then you know obviously like Russia supporting Iran and North Korea and stuff like that, where we we've definitely still been doing it. We just want to like kid ourselves into pretending <laughs> that it's different than it yeah. was in the 1960s, and it is slightly, but not. You're probably right. Not it's really. probably more similar than it is to Cyprian. Yeah. Um, but what I was saying was, like, I, I don't necessarily want to give them credit because it's not a good thing that they're meddling in other countries' elections. But it is a little impressive mm-hmm. that they, like, thought of it. And they're it, this good at and it. And they were, like, so successful. Yeah, because we've seen that the Russian military sucks at being a military like right they're like like for they're not doing so great mm-hmm. against a country that nobody would have considered a military peer in peer. any way yeah, shape or right. form maybe you know? like a peer to like egypt i guess or yeah something. but not to russia no not to, not to like a nato country know, or anything we've like always that. we've always considered russia our military peer like yeah, and that's right. and that's why we spent all of this time and money building shit to compete with what we thought Russia had or what they were telling us they had, and now now they're showing us what they had, and we're like, man, we way over prepared. <laughs> <laughs> no, I think we just do it at a different scale. Yeah. I think they have the technologies that we a lot of the same, like supersonic missiles and stuff. Um, like they do have some of that stuff. They just haven't invested, like across the board in every way and well, having such a stockpile they, they like, have stuff that they have prototypes of stuff they have sure, okay, they have sure, sure, maybe sure. slightly functional examples of something that could in theory be those right. things but, but they, they don't, don't have, have brigades no, and they you don't know, have applicable it's like they're they're fifth gen or sixth gen whatever gen we're on fighters that they claim that they have and it's like you got like four of them and they don't fly most of the time, and they like, <laughs> yeah. and they don't do the things that they claim that they can do. You know, sure. like we can still see them on radar because they are the size of a semi truck. You know, like <laughs> sure. it's not yeah. that stealthy. Um, and so, to be like, fair, the F thirty fives have not performed. I think as sold. No, the F thirty five program. Uh, I think. The F thirty five program is finally coming into its own. I will I give it. I will give it credit is. that it that it is. But the F thirty five program did not do what it originally set out to do, which was to basically replace the F sixteen and the A ten and uh, the F eighteen. Um, it was it was basically supposed to replace the rest of the military fleet, right? It's supposed to replace the Harrier and like all of this. And I think it has successfully replaced the Harrier at I least. I think so. I think so. Um, and uh, and you know, it is now the most operated fighter jet among like Western allies. Sure. I'm pretty sure. sure. And whatever, like, it, it is finally coming into its own. But we expected it to do everything. Sure, cost like it did everything. That's exactly. Sure. <laughs> um, That's Lockheed Martin for you. But Not that I think we should have gone with Boeing, my NG. No, yeah. <laughs> At least these ones fly now, finally. <laughs> right. Yeah. Um, it did take them a while to get there, but <laughs> Not, uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. And, and you know, there was definitely a lot of um, corporate greed, corruption, and price overruns in the program, oh, like mean, from start yeah. to finish, just right. dumb stuff. But uh, but I think a lot of it was the military expected something that you could just you just can't make a one size fits all piece of technology like that yeah i mean and, try replacing the a10s like right. nobody wanted that yeah and and it still hasn't been done i mean no. they've been going to replace the a10s for decades and it's just it's it's a purpose built aircraft that does its job really really well and uh the 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 other problem with the f35 was the biggest reason to replace these things or the the biggest reason that those planes exist 
is because they're lower cost to operate for missions that you don't need all of the fancy stealth technology and all that kind of shit. There's a reason we don't fly an F-22 for every air mission. <laughs> you know, like we have planes that can do just as good of a job as the F-22 in a variety of missions that cost way fucking less to operate. Sure. And so that's where the F-35 really needed to compete, and that's where it really struggled was operational costs and maintenance costs were just astronomically higher than the F-16. And so if you're, if you're going to go fly something and it doesn't need to be stealth and it doesn't need all this high tech, you just need air presence or you just need to do, you know, whatever these basic routine missions are, why are you going to go fly operate a jet that costs three times as much per hour to operate or whatever like, it is? I'm making up that number, but I know it's... I feel like you've been waiting to talk about this for a long time. I've had lots of opinions on the F-35 <laughs> project, and I've followed it. I've followed it for a while, and like I, I said... I haven't followed it since college, so... Yeah, like, I, it, it has come a long ways. It is now what I would consider a successful um, fighter jet program at this point. Hmm. Uh, it's the costs are coming down. The costs are being offset with how much we're selling to other countries. Um, and it does its job well. The technology has finally been debugged for the most part. Uh, that was a big thing. It's all a bunch of brand new technology they're trying to shove into, you know, a new aircraft. And it's, it was a lot of growing pains. Um, I don't know that it was worth it. I mean, we <laughs> spent more on the F-35 program to just come up with a new fighter plane, which we've been building fighter planes since, like, the early 1900s right um it cost us more to do that than it cost us to put a man on the moon in like adjusted dollars or even even not yeah in adjusted dollars even in adjusted dollars like the whole apollo program was less than the f-35 program which nice. is just insane to me like we put people yeah. on a foreign celestial body <laughs> right. for the one and only time in human history so far right and uh and we did that from scratch basically like you know <laughs> Yeah, so kind of successful, kind of not. Mm -hmm. Speaking of Russia, totally on topic <laughs> this entire time. Speaking of Russia, so that that's what's been. Um, Russia's always done this really well. Is like the psyop stuff, mm -hmm. um, and the and the disinformation campaigns, like all through the Cold War. Russia had a, a, a was really solid at this. They were really solid at espionage. They were really solid at this kind of stuff and um obviously they still continue they they apparently suck at everything else militarily wise which they always have they sucked this much during world war ii as well they just yeah. their their military strategy is usually throw people at it till the enemy runs out of bullets and um yeah. that's that's kind of what they seem like they're doing again uh but this this way of disrupting their um uh geopolitical opponents so to speak they have been very successful at and it's not just in the united states it is it is all over the world as you were saying yeah so back in 2016 uh apparently straight from vladimir putin mm -hmm. uh the ira which is the internet something agency internet resource sure that so uh, russian internet just you know mm -hmm. disinformation group and then the gru which is like their CIA, I think. Yeah. They launched a program or a project called Project Lakta. Lak Lakta. Lakta. I'd say that's, yeah. Lakta. Lakta. Um, basically, they created several hundred of, you know, social media accounts across Facebook. And is MySpace still around in 2016? <laughs> not really. I mean, <laughs> MySpace is still around. But <laughs> right. it, okay. It's but, not around in the way that it yeah, was. MySpace or uh, Facebook and Twitter, I think, are the two yeah. biggest ones. Um, basically, they were accounts that promoted or that were supposedly Americans mm -hmm. uh, supporting radical political groups and planned or promoted events in support of Trump and against Clinton. You know, uh, Putin was mm -hmm. under the, the you know, notion that Trump would not be as good of a president for the United States and or he would be potentially more malleable, <laughs> more malleable and just better for Russia to yeah. have Trump, which did. He he was, seemed like he pegged that one pretty yeah, pretty straight on. Kind of you know? did. Um, so basically, they reached hundreds of millions of uh, social media users. Um, I think I have a stat in here. Their posts were shared somewhere around 350 million times Jesus. in the year leading up to the election. Yeah. Which essentially means that... Every single person in America shared it. Every single person in America one. or... <laughs> 
every voter saw at least like two to three yeah. things mm-hmm. um, that were disinformation. Um, not to mention the like actually hacking of DNC yeah. and all that stuff. So um, on social media alone, though, basically they would buy advertisements um, and somehow they how many user accounts and just how many people were reached by them is mm-hmm. like a really wide range. Oh, Some, it's a hard thing to quantify. Like, true, obviously, yeah. true. Um, but basically, so I guess out of like a specific group of 470 accounts that were known to be created by Russians during the 2016 campaign, mm-hmm. campaign just six of them mm-hmm. generated content that was viewed. All like almost 350 million times. So that's wow. what I was. That's the mm-hmm. you know. So mo- way more than 340 million. Um, I'm sure. Yeah. Uh, shares and likes and. Well, and I mean, and I'm sure that a lot of the accounts that they generate uh, don't gain any traction too. Like, I mean, you can oh, make a Facebook right. page or whatever. Well, and... right, and not every one of them is going to be like your your you know influencer mm-hmm. type one. You're just like yeah. get you know, selling likes and whatever, Mm -hmm. selling, selling, uh, follow. But I'm sure a lot of those 470 accounts are, well, I guess I don't know at this time if they were doing this kind of shit, but it's the, the chat bot type shit that goes into the comments and just argues in other types of accounts. Yeah, no, they definitely weren't doing this in 2016. In 2016, Mm -hmm. there was essentially, you know, no social media politically at political advertising, Mm -hmm. um, before that, I mean, yeah, like in 2012, the, Facebook was a baby. Like it had been around for like four to five years, yeah, and that was it was at a time where it was still competing with MySpace. Yeah. So like it was not a powerhouse of social media that it, that it was around 2015, 2016. So um, they definitely got in on the ground floor mm-hmm. on the political advertisements and that sort of thing. Um, and so did uh, so did the Trump campaign. I mean, yeah. using Cambridge Analytica like in the way that they did, um, it was just leagues ahead of what mm-hmm. anything um, you know the Clinton campaign was doing. Um, so, uh, twenty sixteen, Facebook was America's biggest social media platform. Right? No, yeah, in twenty sixteen, but I bet in twenty twelve, twenty twelve, it was probably up there for sure uh social media was inescapable in 2012 facebook bloomed to 1 billion users instagram surpassed critical mass twitter took over yeah Yeah, i just think it was a much like even Mm -hmm. face it just wasn't flushed out like there wasn't as many ads on facebook yeah no it was more like it it still used to be the original facebook of your your (laughs) grandparents are looking at your pictures on you know that kind of shit you could barely do like events i think yeah on there in uh 2012 there was no marketplace there definitely was no marketplace (laughs) thank god Mm -hmm. back in the good old days (laughs) yeah when uh, you could still get murdered on Craigslist. Yep. I miss those days. <laughs> um, so then, you know, just a whole separate program from the social media aspect is they actually did physically hack into the Democratic National Committee, Democratic mm-hmm. you know, Congressional Campaign Committee, blah, 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 Clinton campaign directly. Um, they got like thousands of emails that were stolen from uh, the Clinton campaign and then post those selectively mm-hmm. on you know WikiLeaks and something called DC Leaks and yeah. so like a, a bunch of stuff that was you know back at a time where people didn't like realize if you send an email it mm-hmm. lives in perpetuity yeah and you shouldn't be saying like oh Bernie Sanders <laughs> is a liar or, like a goddamn liar or like he's a whatever you know catholic slur (laughs) like well and and this is this is the the frustrating thing about it too is because like i'm not mad that that stuff got exposed yeah like i don't blame wikileaks i mean i think that they should have done a better job of vetting where they received their information because they say it wasn't from russia and Mm -hmm. then we found out actually it was was from russia Mm -hmm. and so by them not being good enough at their research or their their, they basically spread russian propaganda yeah spreading sending emails out Mm -hmm. you know exposing what people are saying behind curtains 
I don't have a problem with. Yeah, and and so like, and that's like the thing is, in and of itself, it wasn't necessarily Russian propaganda. It was just like, like Debbie Washerman Schultz should not have been saying that shit. Right. right and right. I'm glad that she got exposed. Um, it is. It's one thing to expose somebody, yeah. but it is another thing to release that information as a weapon yeah, or to and, and that's as a campaign what, tool. That's what I'm 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 getting at there is that like it it sucks that this was exposed via a, a Russian, you know, uh influencing campaign. Right. Right. Um and and like and that's and that's like the frustrating thing is it's that double edged sword of like, great, I want this kind of transparency and these yeah. kinds of whistleblowers. Um I don't want it because Russia is using it to try to give us Donald Trump in the process and, you know, destabilize the United States and, and Western civilization as it is. Mm -hmm. um, not that we don't deserve it on some level or another and not that we don't do the same shit to Russia. I want to be very clear that, like, we, we probably I guess I don't know their their social media situation over there, I feel like, is much different. So we're probably yeah, I feel like we're not doing as much social media campaigns. Mm -hmm. We absolutely do. American propaganda mm -hmm. across the world. Mm -hmm. It's not like Fuck, we were doing it. We invented it. We had like Radio <laughs> right. Free Asia it's and like still, shit like that. that still yeah. stuff exists. All yeah. that stuff that's that, like CIA. What, CIA is it, what is it? What is it called? There's like a, a program. I think it's like AFM or something. Like there's an American like uh, program that we literally fund mm -hmm. and spe put hundreds, you know, a lot of fucking millions of dollars into mm -hmm. every year. That is. The sole job is to create American propo, mm -hmm. and some and some of it is here in in the United States. Oh yeah, and some of a lot of it is. is. I mean, international. We we are very much a victim of our own propaganda as much as the rest of the <laughs> well, world is. Right. You know, yeah. like but I mean, the red scares the obviously. Yeah, obviously. You know? <laughs> um, but that's that's the that's the thing, right? Like. We're talking about this as how bad it is that Russia is doing this, obviously from a an American perspective, and we don't want them meddling in our elections and that. I, I very much stand by that. I'm right. not doing yeah. that. You're never going to be like, oh, Russia has a right to meddle no. in democracy. It's like, oh, um, uh, and, 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 and I'm more doing it like saying that I'm not excusing America doing the same shit in other places sure. either. Yeah. I just want to be clear about that. Like, I'm well aware that we do this shit. Uh, yeah. I mean, and... if, if there was a, you know, if China somehow came out with like a Mueller report or something, mm -hmm. if they had elections in the same way or right. if there was something mm -hmm. showing that we were disrupting like their economy or yeah. like just something about you know, the way that they function as a society mm -hmm. and we were influencing people to, like, destabilize the country, yeah. that would be fucked up. Yeah, absolutely. And we should absolutely, be, that should absolutely be leaked and mm -hmm. that should absolutely be chastised. Yeah. But we don't have that right no, now? No, because, because we don't have to do it secretly most of the time because, like, we do it, we just call it sanctions. Right. Well, yeah. yeah. And, you know, like, we, a lot of the shit we do do secretly, but I feel like a lot less of it is with our, like, bigger adversaries and a lot more of it is with, like, you know the uh, the Central America and not as much yeah. anymore, but like that. Well, that's still sort of, Venezuela mm -hmm. and Cuba. Yeah, uh, that sort of stuff is where we we meddle in those ways. Um, True, we we meddle where we can't. Like we really couldn't necessarily get away with it on a on a UN type scale. <laughs> yeah, like we're not funding the Contras anymore mm -hmm. type thing. Like yeah, we're... I don't know. It's <sighs> It's rough. So, like, I, I totally understand the the American hypocrisy and being oh, mad about yeah. this shit. But, <laughs> right. like, Absolutely. you know, it's not us doing this either. And, like, it, it's it's bad for Americans as well as, yeah, it's, you know, it's, it's it's bad for the whole world when this kind of stuff it's happens. It's destabilizing yeah. to the United States. It's destabilizing to every Western democracy mm -hmm. because the United States is one of the largest yeah. Western democracies. So it's destabilizing to the global economy mm -hmm. and or just global democracy. And we're obviously seeing some of the effects of mm -hmm. that destabilization, especially in the U.S., in Germany, in France. Um, you know, we're, we're seeing it all over the place. No. Um, but basically, so, you know, we did the whole like Russia investigation into mm -hmm. Trump and all that stuff. And uh, Robert Mueller ended up, you know, giving out the Mueller report around the beginning of 2019 and basically concluded that Russian interference was sweeping and systematic mm -hmm. and violated U.S. criminal law. And he ba they basically indicted like over 20 Russian citizens and three Russian organizations and 
they examined everything with the Trump campaign and Russian officials, and there was definitely communication. Mm-hmm. Um, and it seems like although the Trump campaign was welcoming mm-hmm. of Russian, you know, it, it wasn't it wasn't quote unquote collusion. They're like, you right. can, you can. I'm not gonna like tell anybody you're doing yeah. this or like make a fuss about it, but mm-hmm. like I'm not gonna say please do it. Basically. Yeah. Um, they that, 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 was, that was some pretty blurry lines about it not. Oh being yeah, Ru- and Russia like try to do all the back channel stuff. Mm-hmm. There's a whole lot of back channeling mm-hmm. uh, that you can do more research on. Um, look up the uh, what is it? The correspondence uh, bre- or the National Breakfast Catholic yep. Breakfast, whatever mm-hmm. it's called. Well, um, and like Trump's kids, uh, wasn't yeah, it, like, Donald Trump Jr. Yeah, was meeting with uh, Russian assets, and then there's all the times that Trump just met with Russians without like any cameras or anybody but a translator in the room, you know, like, yeah, but they, you know, they found there was not insufficient evidence or there was insufficient evidence to bring any, you know, conspiracy or coordinating char- charges against Trump. Um, I don't know, you know, if Trump just somehow didn't do a good enough job at trying to get them to help or like he legitimately just was like arrogant enough to not think that he actually needed to enlist the Russians assistance. Yeah. maybe. I don't doubt that like he absolutely would have like worked with them if it was, he thought that it was a hundred percent for sure that he wouldn't get caught. I don't doubt that he did. Like, I still feel like it was just insufficient evidence doesn't mean innocent. True. Right. So, you know, and there's there's enough circumstantial evidence to be like Well, uh, right. There's enough circumstantial <laughs> evidence to be like if you had an ethical bone in your body, yeah. then you would be like, well, that's a lot of coordination yeah. with the foreign entity. That's uh, and, and so that's a lot of circumstantial evidence. And then you add the other circumstantial evidence that he has, you know, not insignificant financial ties to Russia. Fair. Um, and, and some very sketchy business deals that don't seem to make a whole lot of sense. Like when he, you know, sold properties to Russian oligarchs for way more than they were worth. Um, yeah. you know, that, yeah. that kind of stuff, it starts to look like there's more and more where it's like, I feel like there's enough circumstantial evidence to be like, yeah, he's, he's probably guilty in like the OJ sense. <laughs> right. <laughs> yeah. I mean, I, th- at this point, like you're never going to convince a single Trump supporter that mm. like any of this yeah, that he's guilty a of matters yeah. or has done anything mm-hmm. like questionable. Yeah. So absolutely not. I, I don't even blame Mueller. Like even if he like had like probable like cause yeah. on, un- I think like unless he had an absolute slam dunk, mm-hmm. like a silver freaking bullet. Yeah. There's, he well, it's, it's a president. It was unprecedented. <laughs> unprecedented. <laughs> unprecedented. <laughs> um, it was un unprecedented. Uh, in, in basically every way, you know, we'd never dealt with this. We've never indicted a sitting president. We've never, no, no. Uh, you know, no other president has ever been charged with a crime. Y- you know, like, right. so it's, it's like the, the questions of, can we even charge a president with a crime? Which is just insane to me that that is like a real question, but it's like, can yeah. we even charge a president with a crime? Is Not that anymore. a real thing? We can do well. You still technically can. It's just the courts, lower courts, have to decide if they've got immunity. If it was official duties, they were dutying when they were, you know, committing the treasons. Right. No, that's what I mean. Because treasons okay as long as you're doing it officially. <laughs> <laughs> right. Yeah. It, it would have been nice to have a little bit more clarification on that whole yeah. official duties thing. Um. But you know, it mm. seems like ancient history that we've been like talking about Russia for years. And, you know, we have rightfully because they've been continuing to fuck with elections. They didn't do as much in 2020, I don't think, Yeah, but they definitely were still still a lot. We're still doing some stuff. It wasn't as like, blatant. I think they like got smarter about it. Well, I think to the, uh, um, after like Cambridge Analytica and all of that, and the the social media sure Facebook platforms started doing more to disrupt their mm-hmm. attempts to do that. Um, so it became, I think, just more difficult for them to be successful at it. It's not that they weren't trying; it's right. that uh, it became less efficient. Right, and now you got Russian AI chatbots and stuff on Twitter <laughs> that are just awesome. And <laughs> now you come to today, basically, mm-hmm. where we have found that. Uh, Russia, once again, is instead of creating fake U.S. 
you know, citizens to yeah. promote content and promote ads and stuff mm -hmm. uh, on their behalf. They just decided to buy real U.S. buy citizens. U.S. real citizens, <laughs> re real you know promoters and uh, online personalities. Um, I've actually only heard of a couple of these, but the biggest ones I thought were Tim Pool, mm -hmm. Dave Rubin, and Benny Johnson. Mm -hmm. um, and I know Tim Pool and Dave Rubin the best. Um, and it honestly doesn't surprise me in the slightest. No, t that Tim Pool like is a happened. is a Russian chat bot that just got weird scienced into existence. Yeah, it's like before before any of this ever happened, it's like. That's well, I don't know if it's like if it was a Russian chatbot or they were just like, hey, you could like talk about Ukraine more. Right. And then like just the GOP doesn't want to fund you know, the war in Ukraine as mm -hmm. much. And so they're like, yeah, we're just going to lean really hard in that. Mm -hmm. But anyway, like if you listen to anything that what these guys say about Ukraine, um, I think with like the most outrageous was one, I think it was Tim Pool, where he said that like Russia is the biggest threat to the United States out of any other threat whatsoever. Wait, what? Ukraine. Sorry. Yeah, I was going to say. <laughs> Ukraine is the biggest threat uh -huh. to America. Yeah, clearly. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> um, but basically, they were being secretly funded by Russian state media employees um, to basically make English you know, videos and, mm -hmm. you know, and make English influencer videos um, that were pretty darn consistent with, you know, Kremlin, mm -hmm. you know, uh, um, interest and... Um, basically amplifying, you know, domestic divisions. Yeah. Um, yeah. I'm getting paid 400 grand a month, <laughs> 10 grand to 400 grand a month. Yeah. So I think it was like Tim pool was getting a hundred grand an episode. And I think Dave Rubin was getting like, I think he got like 5 million a year, like over like a lot more. He got like millions. Uh, how do I become a Russian propaganda influencer? Like, <laughs> right. <laughs> yeah. Uh, honestly, I was, I was listening to Hassan talk about this, like right as it came out, he's uh -huh. like, no shot. Every one of you chatters would be taking a hundred grand a week to, to say whatever Russia uh -huh. wanted you to say. I, I would, in, in, in a moment, in a heartbeat, I would do it in the most sarcastic way possible. And I would probably get fired right away. Yeah, but right. once once that hits my PayPal account, motherfucker, you ain't getting it back. So. <laughs> <laughs> and and all I need is a hundred grand. The first hundred grand is gonna go a long ways. I can right. get fired after that and feel real good. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. Honestly, what I would do mm. if it were me, at, but I wouldn't. I'd be targeted right wing grifters well, on yeah. purpose. Uh, yeah, like, obviously, obviously people... they're not coming after you know. <laughs> oh, they chose these people on purpose because mm -hmm. uh, they knew they wouldn't give a fuck about saying shit like yeah. this and we're already inclined to do so mm -hmm. um but uh, basically so and the u.s justice department doesn't even really acknowledge wrongdoing on those people he they you know they say that they believe that tim pool and dave rubin were misled and basically they didn't like look into what they were being asked to say and they like even said they're like we had full journalistic you know flexibility and nobody said you know nobody but my staff ever you know decided what kind of content we were going to create and it's like I so you had full journalistic flexibility and this is still the shit you said out <laughs> loud that's even worse man. yeah that is even uh, worse exactly like <laughs> i i don't quite yet believe them no um, i don't believe them in the slightest uh i'm I'm sure they were using Babel to learn Russian this whole time. Like I, I <laughs> right. just cut out the middleman, talk to them directly. So the Russian uh, Russian state media company RT was essentially funneling around ten million dollars into a Tennessee-based content creation third-party company, mm -hmm. and that c company was paying the influencers. Yep. So not even really that many degrees of you no know, it removed. wasn't that much of a corporate shell game no, to and, get and to this I point i think they knew who the people were at the tennessee based company like mm -hmm. that they were like russian people and that yeah. they had they if they did a little bit of research no oh, yeah could have yeah. determined that they had some pretty strong ties uh -huh. to to russia but uh it, this you know. this really feels like some Reagan level plausible <laughs> deniability, you right. know, like oh I just I just didn't know that was other people doing stuff and I'm I'm the victim here, right? They're but, always the victim, you know. For p people who say like accuse everybody else of having the victim mentality, every <laughs> time they get in trouble, it's like, right. but no, really, I am the one who who really suffered the most from this. Right. Those six women that I potentially that are suing me for sexual <laughs> assault, they're the liars, and I'm the victim. Mm -hmm. Uh, every single time. <laughs> it's pretty awesome. 
Yep. And then once again, you know, I'm the victim for receiving all of this money <laughs> to, right. to spew absolute bullshit that I knew was bullshit on behalf of the Russians because right. I do think it's funny that now Tim Pool's like, oh, no, Ukraine's, like, great. Now, all of a sudden, like, just 180 degree. Oh, like, wait. Did he say yeah, that? Yeah, he did. Because <laughs> right. now he's trying to backpedal on it, obviously, and be yeah. like, oh, I, I, was, I was misinformed. I was duped, you know, because I'm the victim. So, like, <laughs> I, 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 was, I was a victim for believing this. Like, right. No, just, yeah. just trying to save face because he doesn't want to go to prison, I'm sure. I'm yeah, sure, like, right. He's got to spend his money that yeah, he has earned uh-huh. from being a grifter for from Russia, being, from being a traitor. Like, this, <laughs> right. This is, this yeah. is legitimately yeah. treason. If we're if we're really being honest, like, I mean, it does say something that these are uh, right wing grifters, mm-hmm. and yeah, I, I think it's just very like yeah. on the nose. Also, like, you got to start wondering. Why uh, these people who support conservatives at this point are um, are are okay with like they know they know they've got to know like Russia is influencing this stuff and then they're just like okay well Russia's cool though not like this is a problem and maybe I should rethink my life choices if I'm supporting the people that yeah. Russia is illegally supporting like <laughs> you would think. The cognitive dissonance is overwhelming. It is. It is. It is their superpower. It really is a superpower. They don't have any other ones other than being freaking weirdos. Mm-hmm. But um, that's that's a, that's their biggest one is the cognitive dissonance of, of capabilities. It is, it is. I also want to point out that this company was in Tennessee, and I'm so unsurprised. I would have only been more unsurprised if it was Texas. I feel like <laughs> sure or sure. Florida, right? But yeah. Straight out of Tennessee, all the people who used to uh, hate communism and Russia and all of that now are the people who who are literally doing their bidding for them. For sure. Um, yeah. So I, I don't know. I, I guess what's the point? I, th- I feel like all of this stuff's pretty much been talked to death, especially by the time that this airs. You know, it'll be another week of airtime right. on this. Right. Um, and, uh, you know... It's important to know that Russia felt it necessary for their own interests. And this is where I really feel like people need to understand. Like, if you don't find a problem with this, just think about it in this way. Russia has spent hundreds of millions of dollars, uh, the 300 millions, 300 millions of dollars since... Uh, since 2014. Right. And this, you know, this number was like 2020 mm-hmm. numbers. Yeah. So, so this, I'm sure it's close a, to 500 million. Well, right I mean, now. yeah, there's definitely a few million just in like a handful <laughs> of influencers, you know, from this week. Uh, they're, they are not going to spend that kind of money Um unless they feel like they're doing something that furthers their own national interest. And and no matter how you feel about Russia, no matter how you feel about Putin, yeah. uh, which y- you probably feel wrongly if you're <laughs> supporting them, but right. that's, that's besides the point. Uh, everybody's entitled to be insanely, incredibly wrong sometimes. Um, no matter how you feel about it, you've... Like, you know, when you're always questioning the government and shit and like, don't trust the government that goes for other governments, too. And if Russia is doing this shit, (laughs) (laughs) like, like you shouldn't be trusting the Russian government just as much as you shouldn't be trusting the American government. Right. Like, like you should have the same fucking conspiracies because this is a conspiracy. They're not doing this because they feel for the plight of the poor MAGA. (laughs) <laughs> in the United States. Like this isn't this isn't some benevolent cause. Russia yeah. is doing this because they want to further their own state interests and the biggest obstacle to their state interests being furthered is the United States. Right? And so they are they are their only intention is to destabilize and weaken the United States global standing so they can strengthen their own. And whether you you feel like Russia is in the right or the wrong on some shit that they are definitely in the wrong on. Um, like that should still be concerning for you. Like, yeah. absolutely. And again, well aware America does this all the time, all the time. Yeah. Also concerning and, and not in the right in those situations, no. but like, no. you know, two wrongs don't make a right. You don't, <laughs> we don't get to justify Russia doing this because America also does it. Like no. neither of them should be doing it. 
Yeah, I mean, I can't believe that you would be thinking like, oh, America's bad and their big government sucks. And so I'm going to, you know, root for the Russian government. <laughs> like, just definitely a beacon a, of, you know. <laughs> just a really big leap uh, that I I will never understand. Um, I mean, because they're not like some moral, in, like, powerhouse or like they're not doing anything they're they're just doing the authoritarian thing yeah like they're not doing anything special which obviously i mean they they seem to love the authoritarian thing so i mean maybe that maybe that's really what it is is they really just want to be told what to do you know <laughs> and and they really want to tell everybody else what to do i think is what yeah. it comes down to uh, that's you know probably true don't be gay or woman <laughs> right <laughs> yeah exactly be an oligarch yeah <laughs> Or brown. You shouldn't be brown either. You know, we don't want any of those. We just want just regular, regular white dudes. Everybody <laughs> should be a regular white dude, but also super rich. Right. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> but so, uh, I mean, what, so what we're saying is like, are we for sure that like Russia made Donald Trump the president in 2016? Like, it's difficult to say like how much that stuff had an impact to an outsized influence. Um, yeah, probably it helped. Oh, and it, it was razor slim on on the electoral college. It, it certainly helped. I I will go out and say that I would bet money that without Russian disinformation campaigns and just it, interference on social media alone, Trump would not have won. I will I will say because. As close as it was, it was a few thousand votes in like three states, right? right? Yeah. Um, and the amount of just old people who are easily fooled by the dumbest shit on the internet, right? Who just believed it all, and and they because they weren't gonna vote for the pussy grabber in chief, you know, like they weren't going to vote for. Like, yeah, Grandpa's racist, but is he that racist, you know? Like, I mean, like, there, there was still some sense of, like, decorum and something. And I think... Sure. I, but, you know, you could go say the same thing. Would he have been elected if Fox News wasn't a thing? And and it's, it's the... Yeah. 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 I, I don't want to say that they're necessarily responsible, but I do want to say yeah. that without them, I don't think he would have won the election. Yeah. No, that's fair. And even if he doesn't, didn't, or, you know, it didn't actually affect it. Like, let's mm. say, like, it didn't. It absolutely had an effect of escalating the destabilization of our political environment. Oh, a thousand um, percent. Within our country, mm -hmm. I said in France has a huge authoritarian right wing mm -hmm. that's up and coming. Germany's had a lot of that same stuff happen to okay, them. Okay, Germany, you better be careful. We're like... <laughs> no, that's, that's true. <laughs> that's true. So I think you could at the minimum say that they have been extremely successful just in their campaign for mm -hmm. destabilization, more so than any other country has been... Yeah. Over use, using media as mm. as its uh, attempt in the modern you know era. I wonder if QAnon is part of this whole Russian disinformation campaign. <sighs> I feel like we'd have more links to like specific. Nah, I don't think it. I don't think. I think that's think homegrown. So? Crazy. I mean, it, it it totally could be. Yeah. Obviously, I think um, it's, I think it's too four channy. You know, yeah, like. Um, came from that side of the internet, yeah. not from Facebook and Twitter. Right, right. But who's to say that Russia isn't on the 4chan? I mean, I'm sure That's they've got to be. It's true. I mean, you, you know. know the, the most gullible people are there. That's <laughs> where they would be going. They're trying to find the dumbest among us, you know? like That's, that's fair. That's fair. Oh. So kind of getting to responses here, because obviously, like, they're not stopping. No. Anytime soon. Mm -hmm. um, I actually just read an article this morning, um, an opinion article from the Washington Post, uh, suggesting a sort of NATO esque, um, you know, cooperation between yeah. Western democracies mm -hmm. in how they respond to election interference. Hmm. So if they interfere with one of these, you know, countries, then you know, all countries will rescind diplomatic, you know, um, diplomatic uh, embassies and ambassadors, and like, I like that. Do just, some sort of sanctions in some way. Just a little bit of like collective pressure. I mean, <laughs> it's better than nothing. what we have is yeah. basically each country acting individually mm -hmm. without a coordinated effort, and it's not 
really stopping no. Russia or China. So, I mean, yeah. We need something, something. like that. I, I, I do think, and I think, too, if you had kind of a collective action on this, you would have more people coming up with more effective and efficient solutions to it. Because mm. yeah. there's be, there's got to be some way to be like, we're just not going to allow stuff coming out of Russia on servers in our country or something along those lines. There's got to be some way to do that. And I'm, you know, definitely a tech genius. So I'm speaking from experience and expertise here. But yeah. like, it, it, there's got to be some way to at least moderate and limit that to an extent. The thing um, is they're really good at masking where it's coming. I, yeah, I, I understand that. Um, and when you, especially if you're starting on social media and yeah. something like that, Mm -hmm. There's no way a social media company is going to know that this user that's just now being made is actually a Russian asset or yeah. like a Russian dude sitting mm -hmm. behind a computer. There's just no way they're going to be able to figure that out. That's you, especially in real time yeah. as they're creating a new account. Mm -hmm. Like it's so there's really the only thing I can see is you create a response or you go on the offensive and remove the capabilities of said intelligence agencies and that's a pretty aggressive that would be pretty aggressive pretty aggressive movement so i don't see that happening yeah yeah i wonder too how much we have the ability to like go on the offensive just cyber attack wise and do the same type of hacking and well and... i'm not saying offensive like disrupting the countries i'm saying like go in the offensive and like expose the locations and like the strategies that you know the GRU and mm -hmm. the IRA are using and like like dox them essentially, you know? Like Oh, I think that would be fine. No, I think yeah, I think that would be reasonable mm -hmm. considering they're doing illegal yeah. things, right? <laughs> uh yeah. I, I don't mean, know. It's just a cat and mouse game at that yeah, point. Absolutely. But, and um, and I mean and then that's I think what it's always going to be, but it's just uh it, yeah. Um, and it's hard and it's hard obviously because y you start bumping into free speech problems as far as like if you can't identify that these are uh, foreign governments doing this yeah like because you can't just go like be like well we're just not gonna allow this type of rhetoric on the internet like legally you can't do that uh i mean uh, a social media company could a social say. media company itself could but the government right. can't tell them to do that you know right no we would the real only way to you know uh, create ways where this is no longer a thing that happens mm -hmm. is to go really far into the big brother yeah like, realm um uh, and that's rough in and ways I, that we're not prepared I do is. think I do think too that this will get better as I mean as boomers die, <laughs> and, and and I mean we got a while with Gen X because like they're just about as bad. Well, um, you know they're gonna rise up. Oh yeah, they're they're it, as soon as the Advil kicks in, they're rising up. <laughs> you know. Um, did you know I they're fucking love those <laughs> videos? Just, they're so dumb. Like Gen X still trying to be scary over here. Uh. <laughs> Did you know that they actually have worse lead poisoning than the boomers? They're the generation most heavily affected by... Sure. Uh, and just because of the gas right. in cars, yeah. And, like, lead-based pipes and stuff mm -hmm. like that that hadn't really been removed yeah. until... Yeah, that's definitely part of it. But really, it was they were just inhaling it because of... The gasoline. Leaded gasoline. Um, And where, when the boomers were growing up... uh cars were a lot less dense like fewer people own them by the True. time gen x came you still had leaded gas right but no but carbon emission standards no, nothing, <laughs> it, yeah like that. and uh and so it was um you know way more cars way more uh densely packed areas mm. of cars and a lot more leaded gas and uh so it affected them growing up more like they're developing brains more and uh so yeah we we may be riding out this lead poisoning problem for longer than we thought we were going to and uh <laughs> right. and unfortunately that does affect critical thinking skills and it affects empathy um the i mean it'd be i'd be interested to like I mean, we're, we're not doctors so like no i just would be interested to see like research on that i just have never like looked into like yeah i know that it 
Mm-hmm. I, I agree with you. I'm sure that that's those are things that happen. But like, mm-hmm. to what extent does it in you know inhibit you know those yeah. type of uh, tasks? Um, yeah, and and obviously it's hard to uh, you're looking at this at um, a, a current perspective of a historical thing that happened over a really long time, and it's and it's hard to find controls for that sort of thing right. as well. So it's it's a little bit. We know what the effects of lead poisoning are on the brain, especially like uh, early stage development, um, sure. lead exposure and stuff yeah. like that, and how it affects brain development and and that sort of thing. But um, you know, to say specifically uh, through that, we can't go and and say um, we don't know the concentrations of every every single person mm-hmm. of the generation and and that sort of thing. But their exposure was definitely higher. Sure, uh, and sure. you and you start to see um, just generational differences when you start talking about things like general feelings towards empathy among <laughs> certain age groups or things like that yeah. about empathy. I mean, millennials, we had a big dose of, yeah. of like empathy and compassion, like mm-hmm. drilled into us by like Barney and shit. Like <laughs> when we were n- not even understanding, yeah. you know. Mm-hmm. How to take a crap? Yeah. Yep, yep. So I, it's it's tough to say between whether it's and, generational. And absolutely, there's 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 the societal aspects yeah. of it as well. But um, but yeah, uh, unfortunately, uh, I I still think a lot of it comes down to the fact that we grew up with the internet as well and learned about right. like you can't trust everything that comes up on your screen uh, if it just yeah. because it looks official ish. Right. Yeah. Um and uh, and figuring out primary sources and how to vet those things. And right, where our teachers actually did us a favor by saying we couldn't use Wikipedia exactly. back then because uh-huh. there was no such thing as primary sources no. in Wikipedia back in no. like two thousand. Now Wikipedia is great. Now Wikipedia has oh, it's really pr- great. Yeah. It's not everything about it is great. No. Like there's still really crap pages, mm-hmm. but like for the most part, like you can go to any page that's mm-hmm. about a like a fact or historical mm-hmm. type of thing. And it's and, it's well cited and sourced yeah. back to the primary sources. And if nothing else, it is a great launch pad to go like this yeah. is the information uh this is letting me know what I need to know that I right. need to look this for. It's like the, the normie information mm-hmm. where you want to start. Like if you want to spin it and like yeah. find out more information about specific things, then yeah. you can do that. But um but but yeah, and that's and that's I think too, it was just a generational thing of we grew up learning that in school very young, where a lot of the none of the older generations did. Like you you had the news and the radio and that was what you got and that was right. somewhat regulated at the time. Yeah, yeah. Um, so now that they're in the wild west of media consumption and it's really easy to fall into those confirmation biases. But I think I think as we move into younger generations becoming more prevalent in society this kind of stuff will be less effective because mm-hmm. it's easier for, you know, it's it's the same reason that you don't see millennials and Gen Z falling for the uh, African prince scams and shit <laughs> yeah, like that. Right? You know, it's just like, oh, yeah, this doesn't seem like it's a real thing. Maybe I should check into that. Type yeah. Of thing. Um, so, yeah, I, I don't know. What are some of the repercussions of this? Um, I think uh, that, that are just sort of bothering me as a content creator is this this type of bullshit negatively affects all of us. Um, you know, uh, especially like recently, there's a reason that we're streaming this only on YouTube today and not TikTok <laughs> is because yeah. I got a violation for misinformation when we were live streaming the last behind the scenes recording of the podcast on TikTok. They wouldn't tell me what it was for. I appealed it. They're like, we'll get back to you in 24 hours. That was five days ago. They still haven't. So I'm, I'm currently banned until the 12th on... Bummer on tiktok um and then now suddenly gotten uh you know comment violations and then every other creator right now is going through the same shit and i think that this is like a response a knee-jerk response to like this uh influencers being paid by russian Mm. assets i Mm. think that uh Mm. perhaps they're they're tightening the screws a little bit on their community guideline stuff and just would rather be uh a little overzealous but that that tanks you know um 
the quality of content you consume that that makes right. it really difficult for and the engagement overall. Yeah, right? absolutely. And it just it's just bad for everybody in general. So that's one of the big the big things. Um, and then it, it, it gives people an easier avenue to try and discredit genuine and honest uh, creators and information that they don't like because they're like, oh, well, you're just being paid. And I get I mean, we get that shit all the time. Like people accuse you really? of being paid for by they the 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 ever present they omnipresent yeah, they the, you know the algorithm is just so communicative mm-hmm. about what they want you to be creating <laughs> yeah. so uh so you know um and then obviously it has consequences to the way that people vote the way that they view news news media and government um and the way the policies are written and considered because we've got people like Marjorie Taylor Greene, who believe that, you know, space lasers, Jewish, Jewish space, space lasers, lasers. <laughs> specifically, you know, space lasers that have the Star of David on them, don't believe in Jesus, space lasers right. uh, are, are a thing. And, um, you know, and, and these people write policy and they write policy on. I mean, luckily, like, basically none of it passes, but still, no. they're still trying. Mm hmm. But then, like, who knows how much of this uh, propaganda is about immigration? And obviously, immigration policy is a huge thing right now that's affecting the election. And most of it is yeah. based on just blatant misinformation. Most people's opinions are based on on wildly inaccurate information <laughs> right? and just a no understanding. Yeah, I mean, the Democratic Party is not doing itself any no, favors there by none, you know, none at doing all. like a modicum of like fact checking no, like or debunking. Or debunking. Like, oh, yeah. You know what? We, we see how right the Republican Party is going and we're going to go. Even more so, we'll show them <laughs> that we can do them, but just as bad or worse. <laughs> right. Yeah. Uh, but it's not just Fox News. Like, no. there's a ton of creators out there that are on the left that mm. just don't do a little bit of research. No, not at all. Um, and it's like, it's okay to be wrong. Like, yeah. Because people are wrong all the mm-hmm. freaking time. Um, but like, it, just. Extra Google search yeah, is well, all it takes generally. And that's it. Like that's that's one of the biggest ways we can solve this problem is just just cross reference your fucking sources. Like it's it's right. not that hard. Um even us, especially us. Yeah. Like we get stuff wrong, you know. Uh you know, you should you should especially cross reference the things you agree with. Like specifically cross reference the things that you agree with because it's really easy to just hear something you want to agree with or want to believe mm-hmm. and just not double check it at all yeah and and that's more dangerous than because every time you hear something that you disagree with you're much more likely to go double check it because you want to debunk it right 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 but if it's if it's the stuff you agree with then you're you're much more likely to let that slide so you should always be more skeptical of the stuff you agree with always cross reference it and it's even like like i said we're wrong sometimes just because we're human and we we misread something we misremember something we misspeak on something we do our best to be as factually accurate as possible but but you shouldn't take any one source at face value. You should always just do your best to, if you, especially if you're going to repeat information, mm-hmm. um, you should always do your best. Uh, well, and I even fell victim to this myself mm-hmm. uh, with the group chat of, you know, I've got some gaming buddies and some mm-hmm. of them are uh, Trumpers. Um, and I try not to hold that against them when we're, <laughs> when we're you know, winning Battle Royale or whatever. <laughs> but, like, I said the whole thing where like uh trump uh would would vote go republican because they're the most gullible voters yeah. and he never actually said it never yeah. actually said it i could not mm-hmm. find it it was like a fake news article nope. from the 80s or whatever mm-hmm. that probably wasn't even from the 80s um and i i was like yeah i guess i'm yeah i was wrong guys yep, like absolutely I, mm-hmm. and, and that's and that's exactly it. it's really easy to fall and it's easy to believe that that's something he would say you <laughs> right. know it does but sound like, like something he would say um but yeah no that's that's absolutely true uh that it's not true and and it's it can nobody's exempt from it um but that kind of brings us to to the next thing you know beyond uh cross-referencing getting your primary sources you know we've got the world's information at our fingertips uh don't look stupid uh, by allowing stupid people to use you to spread stupid misinformation. Like, yeah. like that that's part of it. And part of the way that you can do that is just don't consume obviously biased, overtly misleading media. Right. Um, right. If it has, if it has a, a leading title and this is one, I picked one that is actually true, mm. but misleading, right. Okay. Uh, it was uh, Democrats are giving $150,000 in free house uh, down payment credits to illegal immigrants. 
Now, now, if if you just hear that, it doesn't sound even remotely right to me. Right? No, but... it doesn't. It doesn't seem even. Uh, this is a California policy, um, and California has a, a housing assistance policy for certain people who qualify to get uh, housing assistance towards a down payment or something. I think you might have to pay it back. I don't remember what it is, but this has been a policy that's been in place for a while. Sure. Um, and recently they added an amendment that said that people can't be uh, denied simply because of their Im- immigration status. Got it. So it's not like, so the, the title it's makes you... for illegal immigrants. Right. The title <laughs> makes you think that it's like, oh, they're coming across the border. Like, here's 150 grand, buy a house. And, Got you know, it. and it's like, so these still have to be... Quote, they may be quote unquote undocumented, but they still have to have a tax identification number, be paying taxes because they still under the program they have to qualify for Freddie Mae, Freddie Mac, whatever right. the. You still have to have a bank account. Yeah, you have to. I don't know how you get a bank account as an as legal undocumented, uh, undocumented, but yeah, um, I don't know. So there's there's probably very 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 few that would right. ever even qualify for yeah. this, and if they do qualify, they are employed, they're paying taxes, have been paying taxes, have employment history, mm-hmm. like yeah. everything there. Yeah. And so, like, yeah, okay, so they're doing everything right, except they don't have the proper federal legal status. Mm -hmm. Why should they be denied from a program that they're paying taxes? They're criminals. Right, exactly. (laughs) No, but that's a good, that's a good point. But, 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 I mean, it's, it's like, it's right there, and I, I looked that up because a buddy of mine sent that, like, can you believe Democrats are doing this? And I'm like, again, the first, I was like, this seems, there's no fucking way that's real. And then I did a little bit of digging, and those are the kinds of titles that were coming up, like California giving one hundred and fifty thousand dollars to illegal immigrants to buy houses and shit like that. Yeah. And and honestly, this hadn't even been signed by Newsom yet, and, and he didn't say if he would or wouldn't. So sure. it's just potential, right? But it's like you got to read a little bit farther, and uh, if if you're looking for that kind of information, skip those ones that obviously seem like they're trying to lead you to a certain conclusion. Even sometimes on Fox business or fox Mm -hmm. you know on their um written articles yeah even on those like when you get kind of closer to the bottom Mm -hmm. like you can kind of like see where it's like well actually Mm -hmm. the headline don't exactly match what you're saying Uh -uh. like just read the whole article sometimes yeah Yeah. like or or skip to the like Mm -hmm. the last couple of paragraphs (laughs) (laughs) um and, and you know, and so like again, I obviously uh, um, just just fact checking that stuff and and trying to avoid those false or misleading claims. And it doesn't matter if it's on the left or the right. Like obviously, you right. know, we were just talking about that with you and and admitting like it's okay to be wrong and have been d- misled by something. And yeah. it's just being hyper aware of it is helpful with that sort of thing. And then, uh, and then just stop consuming content out of people who have been repeatedly debunked and discredited. <laughs> right. You know, like the the Tuckers and the Jesse Waters and the fucking geriatric millennial. Like, just just stop, stop consuming them. Like, if if they've already been shown that they can't be trusted to provide even remotely accurate information, and they clearly go out of their way to push a narrative, just don't don't consume it. I it, I agree. I just think it's. A little bit, it's going to fall on deaf ears. Probably a million percent, mm-hmm. because Fox News is still one of the largest consumed media sources, and they've gone on record in criminal cases mm-hmm. or civil, cases, civil cases saying that you'd have to be a fucking moron to believe anything we say. Yeah, we're, we're, we're an entertainment network. We're entertainment. We're not news. They've said uh, that in a in a court. Mm-hmm. But still, you're going to take what they say at face value. I yeah. I don't understand. Like that's that's a. Com- uh-huh. Like I said, cognitive dissonance, yep. superpower. Um, yeah. So, just, but yeah, I mean, obviously, if there's some, if there's somebody on any side, yeah, that is a uh, repeatedly mm-hmm. um, and, not putting out good information. And 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 going back to like the previous point about you know blatantly misleading stuff, um, like. All these people I just rattled off, they're, they're rage farmers. That's what they're out there to do is rage right. farm. Right. And and this is important. is like understand the information before you get angry and don't get angry about information you don't understand. Like like that's – if they're – if you are going into something with I'm already mad about whatever the fuck they're talking about and we haven't even gotten into it yet, like it's probably not – a very reliable source to be consuming information. And even if what they're saying is accurate, they're obviously presenting it in a way to lead you to an opinion. And so just try to avoid stuff that's leading stuff that, uh, plays on your emotions. If, if reading a headline gives you an emotional response, 
probably not the best one to start with. You know, <laughs> right. like to like go to yeah. something that doesn't you don't just automatically get a knee jerk emotional response when you read the headline. There's plenty yeah. of information out there to be angry about, but you should you should understand it all before you have that angry feeling. I mean, or you could just stay off like Twitter and yeah, that'd just be great. like there's uh-huh. just you don't see anybody putting out the the crazy mm-hmm. freaking tweets that like <laughs> Elon does, like that are just clearly like meant to just like stir up more mm-hmm. like content. Yeah. Yeah, just just don't do it, guys. <laughs> All right. Uh so so we can we can as a as a collective society um have some of the accountability, hold some of these people accountable just by not consuming and sharing that type of media because we're all really frustrated about it. And, you know, like, you know, Smokey the Bear says, only you can prevent Tim Pool. <laughs> you know, <laughs> and I, like, generally dislike the, like, individual responsibility oh, argument. 100%. But it's, this is different than, like, a carbon footprint right. argument. Like, uh-huh. this is legitimately, like, something that... You, you can, as an individual uh-huh. can do your part to not spread mm-hmm. misinformation. Mm-hmm. It's it it is actually something that yeah. you can do individually, and it's better for you personally too. <laughs> right. Like yeah. like it's just it's it doesn't yeah. cost you any more to not consume. That, this it shit. might take an extra minute or two. Right, and and that's and that's the thing is this where you know a little bit of personal response, and I do absolutely hate the personal responsibility and accountability arguments, yeah. but this is a place where it is on you. Like you have you have the information available to be at least a somewhat decently informed consumer of media well if you're going to choose to consume a news story or news Uh media in general then i think you should also choose to look at a different article about the same topic before you like go Mm -hmm. tell everybody in your group chat about this thing that you read once Mm -hmm. you know and if you have ever shared satire because you thought it was real, ah. just just check out of the internet altogether. Yeah. You're not allowed anymore. You're not allowed to have an opinion on anything. Don't if, vote. If just... it's <laughs> if you're not on the onion, then you just shouldn't be doing satire anymore. It's <laughs> it's not worth it, and nobody's going to understand. I just I just I America's... think the only the onion just has like a like they have like a freaking mm-hmm. invisibility cloak. Like yeah, like. They are the only ones that I think should be doing satire. Well, no, there's there's some, like so America's last line of defense is one I always go to. I don't know if you've ever been no. on there. It's on it's on Facebook. It's like a Facebook page. Okay, and you know it's it's designed to sound very sure. Yeah, right. But they 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 put on everything they post that like yeah. this is satire. Like specifically, right. it's on the page. They put it in, and then they like they make their own article links, like you know yeah. onion links or whatever that they post in the comments. The, and it's so ridiculous, and again, explicitly says it's satire, and it just gets all over Facebook. And people share it, Mega. and then you go into the comments on it, and you'll just watch. And then they troll the fucking morons in the comments, like yeah. calling them stupid. And they just they don't get it. They're like, you know, yeah. If you get your kicks off like that, you should probably go sleep in a hole somewhere. Yeah, just don't don't. If you've ever got caught sharing satire like that, like you just like if if you click. The button that quickly that you can't read the fine print that says this is satire, you fucking oh, tater. I was saying the trolls that troll the MAGA people on the Facebook posts. Oh. <laughs> those people are should like they're like not only are you involved with like sharing the mm-hmm. satire, but you're like actively antagonizing yeah. the people that are like not realizing it's satire. <laughs> I, if you get your kicks off that, like you're a whole different breed of hum- human. I think. I don't know. I do find it slightly entertaining. I'm it's not, not that it's lie. not entertaining. <laughs> it's just like take the entertainment value and that they think it's real and then just like walk yeah. away. Yeah. No, normally I just go through and I scroll and I read the other people making fun of them. I don't, yeah. I, I rarely ever engage. But uh, yeah, it's just, it, it's just, it's so blatant. Like it, it literally says it's satire. It's like, it's like kicking a, a down, a, you know, a puppy that's already down, you know? No, they're not nearly as cute as puppies. That's like, true. Like, that's true. You know, a, a really ugly puppy. <laughs> <laughs> uh, all right. I, I think, I think we, we get it. Um, just, just know uh, that Russia's here and they're not going to go away. So it's, yeah. we can and, do things. And to as stop you consume him. information, yeah. remember that. And yeah. and in the same and in the same tone, because we know that so many of the the quote unquote people in the comments are chat bots that are just designed to do these or things trolls now. or trolls. But which you probably shouldn't engage with either of them, no. honestly. Right. Uh. But yeah, just it, it is sometimes better just not to engage with them. Um, you know, unless Usually it's on my page because the engagement helps my videos do better. <laughs> so feel free to do it there. But everybody else. 
Uh, here it goes. <laughs> Capitalism ruins everything. <laughs> but yeah, just just be be hyper vigilant about it because we know this is a real problem. There's no there's no question. We know the chatbots are real. We know that Russia is paying. They're probably doing this with other people that haven't been caught yet as well. Yeah, yeah. We know that this is happening and we just need to be aware that not everything is as it seems on the internet and yeah. We, we want to make sure that we are being as responsible of consumers of media and making our decisions about the direction of our country and how we're <laughs> voting and the policies we're supporting based on real information and not what daddy really? shirtless horseman is telling us uh, <sighs> telling us to believe. So God, that was a ridiculous photo. <laughs> I just love it so much. That that's... Absolutely bonkers. <laughs> I want to get him and Kim Jong Un riding double shirtless on like and AI. The, AI needs and then, to make and then Trump in like a fake like Hulk man or like you know Trump <laughs> holding up both of the two horses. Oh my god! <laughs> yes, yes, this is what we need. Uh, All right, AI, get on it. <laughs> we can probably make that happen. <laughs> we need to make this happen, <laughs> and then we'll share it. And you know that they will share that shit unironically. Like, yeah, they'll be like, "Who's that brown guy over there?" <laughs> I don't care. It's Trump. <laughs> <laughs> oh it's amazing all right uh anyway uh thank you guys again for hanging out with us yeah. um as always we appreciate and love having you guys here this is the reason that we do it um is because you guys hang out with us every week and uh, listen to us ramble on about all kinds of you know uh trump ai art that we're going to create <laughs> Um, Someday. If, if you want to get any merch, uh, it supports us. Offjawagon.com has both Let the Meat Toast podcast merch. It has my personal merch or my Off Your Wagon merch anyway. Mm -hmm. um, mm -hmm. We have uh, subscriptions both on YouTube, on Patreon. Yep, that's right. We're getting a, a, a lot, actually a, quite a few amount of members on YouTube. So I'm really excited to get some yep. member content, some math. Uh, member ask me anything sessions or whatever yep. uh going here because we're we're getting in the double digits you know, and that's it, awesome that's awesome you know? and, and and we appreciate the hell out of that and, I, and i'm gonna say you guys doing that is basically just your 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 npr support of us <laughs> so to speak because <laughs> yeah. uh, we haven't really offered a whole lot in return for that specific content except for the fact that it helps us pay the bills we pay for the studio we got to pay for all the services to to host the podcast and everything like that um so that helps us out a lot and we appreciate it and we are going to try to do more member specific content to say thank you for that level of support um but yeah uh please if you if you can subscribe and you feel so called to do so we we appreciate the hell out of yeah, that yeah i mean if you can't afford a membership that's totally mm -hmm. fair like we would just love for you to subscribe yeah. and you know like the video or like yeah. the you comments guys, uh, you guys um, watch us we are finally monetized on on youtube anyway so mm -hmm. if you're watching uh on here you know just, just, just you guys, hit play and you yeah, know, walk away. <laughs> <laughs> that that helps us out too. But it honestly, just you guys engaging in general, listening, watching is why we do it. And we never want to downplay anybody who's not, you know, we understand everybody's where they're at. And we're only doing this because you guys, uh, you guys do um, listen and engage and give us a reason to do this. And uh, we only uh, beg for money because, you know, we live in a capitalist hellscape and, and we got bills to pay, but uh, we, we appreciate and love each and every one of you for being here. So, Yeah, that's right. Thanks for tuning in, guys. See Thanks you next for time. Tuning in, and we'll see you next week.